Hello, everyone. Jason Flagel here. We are going to be going live at 7 p.m. Eastern talking about remote tools, best practices for for meetings, work, learning, and staying connected with other people through the um, whole situation with the coronavirus, COVID-19, what's going on. Um, let me know if you can hear me and see me okay. Um, I'm going to be getting everything set up over the next few minutes, tagging a few people and getting some of my notes ready to go. Um, let me just make sure that I can share my screen. And yes, sharing screens working. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and tag some people here. But um, please let me know how's your day going? How's the whole situation with the coronavirus um, going on uh, with you and your family? I'm also going to share a few helpful tips of some really good blogs that I found um, over what, the last few months just in terms of remote work tools collaboration. I'm going to comment those here as well. Yeah, Katie, you're stuck with me. <laughs> uh. Okay. All right, I'm going to start tagging some people here to let them know that we are started. And I asked a few people too to go ahead and submit some helpful tools or ways that they are currently um, collaborating with people remotely. So I will be including their answers. Um, once we get going. Any um, cool uh, activities or fun things that you guys have been doing with you, uh, just yourself or your family um, while you've been spending more time at home? Please let me know in the comment section. Any fun activities or things that you've been doing I know for me, I've been uh, really busy over the last few days because a lot of um, clients have been wanting to send out some information to, uh, to their customers or their clients themselves. And, um, you know, just with their response on what's happening, you know, how they're handling serving other people through this, um, you know, situation. So, um, yeah, it's been a crazy uh, last few days, <laughs> for sure. I think for everyone. I said um, yesterday, I think, that this has been the longest um, uh, longest year of this week or something like that. I, can't, I think it was something like that. Uh, <laughs> Katie, if you're watching, what was the uh, what was the exact quote? Got about four more minutes. If you guys are just joining, we're going to be starting in a few minutes. Love to know how your day is going, how you're working through the um, whole coronavirus situation. We've got a really exciting, action-packed, um, basically a webinar here. Going to be sharing some helpful tools for you guys that you can stay connected, do meetings, um, events, work remotely do online learning, project management, file management, sharing, um, and stay connected with other people through different chat tools, communication tools. So there's a lot of people out there um, who are looking for this information. And, you know, thankfully, I've been able to 
work remotely over the last eight, nine years. So I've had pretty much experience with all kinds of remote tools. Um, it's pretty rare for me to see a tool that I haven't tried yet. So I'm um, going to be sharing some of my favorite ones, some other ones that maybe aren't my favorite, but um, you know, they've worked for me in the past or worked with other, uh, other people. So yeah, Katie said, what a long year this week has been. <laughs> very, very true. <laughs> okay, let's see here. Okay, about two more minutes and we will get started. I had some motivational music on over here, so I should probably uh, turn that off. Can everyone hear me okay? Can everyone see me okay? Um, let me know if you can't see me. I'm gonna share my screen here. Okay, can everyone see my screen as well? How is the audio um, timing? Is my audio matching up? I'm highlighting the 30 tools for managing a remote team right now. Is the uh, audio matching up with uh, real time what I'm doing on my screen? Let me know. Okay. Yeah, and I just tagged a few people who have already interacted with some of my content about the remote work here. Katie said it matches good. All right, um, and I commented, you can scroll down if you're just now joining the video. I went ahead and commented in some of the links to the helpful blog posts that I have just um, uh, found over the last few months. Uh, again, I'm uh, working and managing a remote team myself, so I'm always looking for ways to improve my productivity uh, personally and you know, for the people on my team. So that's something I'm always looking for. Um, but to get us started, so um, real quick, we're gonna be looking in at some collaboration tools, digital collaboration tools that you can use for meetings. Um, you can continue to do work, um, online learning, staying connected with other people. You know, there's a lot of different things I think that we'll get through um, this webinar. But basically, my goal here is to try to equip you guys with as much information as you could possibly want or need through some of these, uh, this weird kind of time that we're going through as. Um, pretty much a, a, a world. Everyone's kind of facing these same challenges. But, um, you know, I've been working remotely the last eight or nine years, um, uh, on or off a little bit, some in office, some out of office. But, you know, I've had a lot of experience working with um, major brands, a few billionaires, all the way down to solo entrepreneurs. So I've kind of worked with a lot of different people at, uh, people at all different levels. And, you know, I'm going to share some of those insights that I have um, found through those experiences with you guys. So what this format is going to look like, what this process is going to look like, I'm going to go ahead and share um, to get us started some helpful information and shout outs from people who did send over the remote tools or their best practice uh, for collaboration. And um, after that, I'm gonna share a little bit more about myself and my story real quick, and then we'll jump into um, some of the tools and doing some walkthrough of that. So first off, we had um, Terry Hirschfeld. So Terry wanted to know some information about basically tips and tools for productivity, having meetings when you can't do so in person. Uh, so relevant for all kinds of groups, businesses, nonprofits, church groups. Uh, that's another big thing. You know, I regularly go to church uh, with my family too. Um, and then we also regularly live stream church too. So you know, there's a whole bunch of tools out there. I'll touch on them really briefly and then mention them when we get through the, the walkthrough. But Facebook Live, YouTube Live, 
um, Instagram Live, Instagram TV, uh, Twitch. There's a whole bunch of live stream platforms out there that all you have to do is get set up. You can use your uh, webcam on your desktop. Uh, you can use your phone to the phone's camera to be able to stream pretty much wherever you're at. If you have an internet connection or cell connection, uh, you can stream uh, with those tools. So YouTube is really nice. Um, and so is Facebook Live. I do a lot of Facebook Lives. Um, there's tools out there that actually allow you to get set up in one platform and you can stream to a whole bunch of different places simultaneously. Uh, right now, you might think I'm using just Facebook to live stream, but I'm not. I'm actually using a tool called Restream.io, and I have that set up as basically my streaming platform. I can go live from this platform and restream to multiple locations, my YouTube channel, my Twitch channel, Periscope, uh, basically any platform out there that allows me to have an API connection, I can live stream there. So really, really nice. Jay, hey Jay, just uh, saw that you commented there. Thank you for using your platform for sharing valuable insights. Thank you, Jay, appreciate that. Love what you're doing too. Shout out to Jay, I'll uh, sh uh, jump into what he shared with me. Uh, but yeah, real quick to finish with uh, Terry's point. So any kind of group, businesses, nonprofits, um, you know, if you guys are doing meetings, Zoom, Google Hangouts, those are two of the platforms that I would recommend to go ahead and check out. Um, Zoom, let me see if I can find it here. Yeah, so Zoom is zoom.us. So if you just type in zoom.us, go to that website. If you're not already set up, it's free to start. You can, uh, I think, uh, do free 45 minute meetings is the limit uh, and then there's a cost to it but you know if you keep your meetings short and concise and get to the point uh, you shouldn't go over google hangouts is totally free that's why i usually recommend google hangouts because if th there is a time when you need to do longer conversations uh, google hangouts is great um, and then if you just type in google google hangouts it should come up number one with the search result um, so Terry, if you have joined the video, I'd love to know if you have any more specific questions, you know, related to um, that question. And that way I could answer them while, we'll, while we are live. Uh, Jay, so excellent tips, resources for shared for working remotely. So Jay, uh, Jay mentions Zoom as well, uh, freeconferencecall.com. Yeah, thanks. thank you for mentioning that, Jay. That was one that I left out. So freeconferencecall.com is great for setting up um, a free conference call line. So you can have as many people join a conference call line as you want using this tool. So just go to freeconferencecall.com, create your account, sign up, and you can create a link where people can uh, get a phone number to call in, a PIN number, and then you can do a conference call, you know, uh, control the muting uh, capabilities, the hosting capabilities. I've been a part of a lot of different conference calls from free conference call, very easy and simple to use. I uh, highly recommend that. Uh, Jay mentions GoToMeeting um, is another good tool. I personally have only used GoToMeeting, I think once or twice. It was really intuitive and easy to use from what I remember. Um, Jay, are there any other specific or um, helpful insights there with GoToMeeting why you like that one? Um, let me know in the comment section because um, like I said, I've only used it a few times. I've heard good things about it. Uh, I just haven't in my workflow uh, really used it all that much. Let's see here. So then Katie, so my wife, Katie, um, is an executive assistant for um, a president of a company in Georgia, and she recommends Zoom, Google Drive, Slack, and Asana for different tools. And uh, she also recommends at least weekly meetings with the team to be able to keep a personal connection to everyone, make sure that everyone is on the same page. That's one thing I personally like to have with my remote teams that I work with or, <clears throat> or manage is, you know, regular check-ins with them. 
Um, daily check-ins in terms of a text um, format, like we use Slack to do some chatting back and forth, team collaboration. So daily check-ins on, hey, what's been going on yesterday? What are you working on today? Are there any challenges that you're facing? You know, really quick, that's all you need. And then weekly check-ins, monthly check-ins, a little bit more um, length of time, longer length of time to check in with them, kind of track that progress is good. So yeah, good points there, Katie. Uh, I have a Slack channel for fun stuff so that you can have more of a relationship with your virtual coworkers and keep a good balance. Yeah, I really like that one. So remote working is great because you can balance your life around the work that you're doing. Um, but it's also important to also stay connected and get some of that social interaction with people. So uh, one of the most common things I've seen in Slack groups or Slack teams is having a water cooler chat, um, you know, something where people can still kind of go and hang out, just have fun. Um, you know, there's been general channel uh, channels, random channels that I've been a part of where a lot of it's, you know, just giving people updates on what's happening in life, what's uh, what's some of the positive things that are going on, you know, uh, what's been happening with your family, all that kind of stuff uh, that you normally get in and off. All that is really, really good. And I highly encourage that too. Um, you know, that, that's again, something here. We're in kind of a stressful situation right now with coronavirus happening, but um, we have the ability with these tools to still uh, stay connected. Slack's great because you can also you can do um, uh, like team collaboration and communication, but you can also do video calls. So I'm going to share my screen here in just a second to give you a visual representation of what Slack looks like. So on my screen here, you'll see what Slack looks like if you are using the desktop app. Um, the If you use a mobile app, it'll look very similar to this. On the left-hand side, you'll have your groups or Slack teams that you're a part of. As you can see on mine, I'm a part of a bunch of different ones. Uh, I, and these are people all over the world, different communities for different purposes. I'm in Online Geniuses right now. Um, I don't want to go into some of these other ones just because they have, you know, some confidential information on here. Um, but this one's more of a general online community. So Online Geniuses is great. Um, it's they really limit it to only people who are well respected in the digital marketing online marketing world. So anyone in the digital space, um, this is kind of where we all <laughs> communicate with each other. So let's see, I'll walk through um, some of these channels here. So like they've got affiliate marketing, agencies, hiring, general, all these kinds of different channels for uh, specific things. So channels are great for topics that you want to have. Um, it'll send you notifications. It'll let you know up here, you know, what the um, description is for the different channels, how many people are a part of it. Um, and it's really, really great, easy to use. You can, uh, you know, stay connected with everyone. I, like I said, I'm a part of a number of different ones and Slack is great. Um, I used a few other tools before Slack, but once I started using it, I mean, it. I never w w want to go back to any other tool. It's nice to do texting, messaging back and forth, and you can also do calls. So up here, you can choose call, you can do video or just audio calls. It's very great to use. It also can be integrated with a lot of other tools. So in digital marketing for me, I do a lot of support. So we actually have notifications for people who mention that there's bugs or issues happening and we get a notification in one of the channels that we have set up just for that. We also have notifications for any websites going down, things like that. There's so many integrative uh, tools out there that you can use. Um, so I'll exit out of here. And then um, I believe it is called Slack add-ons. Um, so it's Slack apps. So if you just uh, Google search, 
um, Slack apps. There is so many different tools that you can integrate with your Slack uh, channel. So here um, they have a whole bunch of different ones. So like they have uh, staff picks from Featured, which is really great. So um, you know, here they've got integrations with Asana, which is a project management tool, Google Calendar, Zoom. Um, so really, it's a it's kind of a hub for all kind of communication and collaboration. Highly recommend um, Slack and that tool. Okay, so let's um, go ahead and. So Katie, you sparked me on the talking about Slack. So <laughs> let's go ahead and get back to um, a walkthrough. So in terms of tools that I'm gonna walk through, I'm gonna talk about managing your time real quick before we jump into some of the specific tools. I already mentioned Slack, so I'll talk briefly about that moving forward. But managing your time, um, Dan Pink, talked about in a recent episode uh, on a podcast that I listened to, he published a book, I think it's called The Power of Timing. But he talks about how every single day should be split into three main parts. You've got your analytical or deep work, you've got your meet the trough or the meetings or calls time period where you know, you're collaborating, communicating with other people. And then you've got a third uh, um, section of your day of time for um, brainstorming creativity. So, and you know, the order of those vary. For me, I'm much more of a early riser. So I actually will do my analytical deep thinking, deep work from like 6 a.m. to about 9 or 10 a.m. And then I'll transition into doing some team updates, email communication, calls, video meetings, um, you know, for a handful of hours after that. And then, you know, at, towards the evening, I'll actually do some planning, brainstorming, note taking, you know, for brain, uh, the brainstorming creativity piece. So I um, highly recommend arranging your day around that. So, some people are flip flopped, you know, they do more of the brainstorming creativity at the very early mornings um, and then do more of the analytical or deep work later in the evenings. You know, whatever, how, however way it works best for you, highly recommend doing that. Okay, so let's talk about the number one section, which is live videos and videos for events. So streaming, um, let's talk about streaming. So. Uh, I just mentioned the, I'll, actually, I'll probably just share my screen here with you. So I'll talk about uh, restream.io. <laughs> so I've got a little bit of a video loop here going right now. Um, but restream.io allows me to do um, multiple streams to different locations. So up here in the URL, if you just type in restream.io, you can go to the website and check it out. And what that does is it allows you, like I said earlier, to stream to multiple locations. So really good if you are a church, a business, an organization, Highly recommend using Restream.io if you're going to be doing some live events or something that you want people to connect with you, you know, in terms of being um, uh, location independent. You know, they don't need to come to a physical location. Um, let's see here. What are some other ones? So if you want to do plat uh, platform specific, you can do Facebook Live right from Facebook. Um, if you go into the section on post a, an update or a status, it'll have an option do live video. So you can go ahead and try that out, test it out. Um, you know, don't worry about being a, a, about embarrassing yourself. Everyone starts somewhere. If you go look at my YouTube channel and see some of the videos that I did um, from you know years ago, it's always going to be embarrassing no matter who you are. But you always have to start somewhere. And you learn this process through doing, you know, you don't, do you think I woke up one day and just started speaking on stages or speaking at conferences? No. And it's the same case with professional athletes. You think they woke up one day and started, uh, you know, performing at that level? No, it's a, it's a process that happens. It's dedication. It's persistence. So, uh, restream.io is probably one of my favorites. Um, I'm going to share this link in the, uh, comment section right now. This is a great um, blog uh, that I found. Um, it's telling me I cannot share it. Well, 
Maybe not. Okay, it's telling me I can't share that. I will um, see if I can share the blog, the link in a different way. Well, that's not working either. So if you go ahead and Google, um, let me share my screen here so you can see it. I'll pull, I'll just pull it up here. Beauties of doing a live stream with technology. Something, sometimes things work and sometimes it doesn't. So this is the blog post. So if you type in um, six best free tools to live stream your event online, should come up with this um, blog post here. And it lists a few of them. So it talks about Facebook Live, talks about this tool live, never used it before. Uh, OBS, Open Broadcaster Software. So a lot of the gaming friends, eSport friends that I am, uh, I have in my network, they use OBS. Uh, I'm actually looking at using it for streaming multiple cameras at once, live stream. Um, yeah, really good um, list here. So highly recommend checking that out. Just, um, you know, Googling those terms that I just mentioned. All right. Um, and then... Uh, YouTube Live is really great too. Uh, have a lot of friends who use it. I've done it a few times. Haven't been doing it too much just because I really like Facebook's community. I like how they do the uh, Facebook Lives. Really great. Um, and then in terms of videos, so just like video sharing, I recommend a tool called Loom. L O O M. So Loom is great. I'll share this link, and hopefully this will work this time. <laughs> There we go. Okay. Not sure why the other link wasn't working. Um, so Loom, I just commented in the comment section, the link to it. Loom is awesome because you can record a video. You can record your screen uh, simultaneously, or you can do one or the other. Uh, so just record your screen, just record your, um, your camera feed. It's really nice because for me, I do a lot of client communication and walkthrough tutorials, how to information, and I'll just power up loom. I have a desktop app. All you do is tap on the app and then hit, uh, record screen share record. Um, you know, something that you want to do. Well, let me share my screen. I'll show you what I mean. So over here again, so Loom is what I have here. It's, I got it saved as an app and it will come up here and show me what I want to do. So do I want to record screen and camera? Do I want to do just screen only or do I just want to do uh, cam only? So, and then I can choose which video source I want to use. Hi, there's me. <laughs> so, you know, you can just do that uh, and then hit start recording and it will record it. And um, let's do this, see what happens. See if it'll do it while I'm uh, still live streaming for you guys. So it'll do a countdown after I hit start recording. And now, right now, the um, Loom video is recording, should be recording everything. Hi, Loom. I'm doing a test here and I'm going to hit stop and it will pop up automatically after I hit the stop button. And um, here's my Loom video. It immediately populates in a new tab for me of the recording that I just did. Um, and it gives me a custom link that I can share with someone else. So this is so great because you know, a lot of people are really busy. They have busy schedules, but why not just hop online, do a Loom video recording of a question, answering, a walkthrough, anything that someone needs, and it's all available through them. As soon as you record it, you have this custom link, and when you create an account, all of the videos are saved in your account in the cloud. You don't have to worry about storage space. So, so nice. Um, I use Loom for at least multiple times a day. Uh, I use it all the time. And once this is finished loading, 
it will allow you to do some playback and then you can also download it you can duplicate the video you can delete it and you can share it and then you can customize you know whatever this title is that you want so loom is awesome uh, highly recommend checking that out if you just hear one tool um, from the list that I just gave you then um, I highly recommend using uh, using loom okay can everyone still see my screen here just want to make sure because for some reason my screen is not uh, showing up. If you can still see my screen, go ahead and comment. I want to make sure because it's not showing up for me right now in uh, <laughs> right now in um, Restream.io. So as long as you guys can see it, uh, we're good. I just want to make sure that you can you can still see it. All right, um, let's see here. Now with the next tool, so Loom, I included that link in the comment section. Um, we are gonna go ahead and talk about some other communication tools, some chat tools that are available to you. So I already mentioned Slack. Um, highly recommend just going on Google, typing in Slack, getting signed up with it. Um, it is great because um, there's a whole bunch of a whole bunch of different ways that you can um, use these tools to collaborate with people. Do um, basically do some um, like uh, communication with the different channels. So break it out by topic, like general um, that kind of thing. Really important. Um, so the other one is uh, Telegram. And if I share my screen here. So Telegram is really good um, for some communication back and forth with people because um, it allows you to do really, really secure communication. So, you know, with different text messages, that kind of thing, um, it's not a secure telegram has a really secure way of sending their uh, encrypted messages so i'm a part of a number of different um uh, telegram groups where you know people collaborate with each other so that's another one their mobile app is really good too um it allows you to stay connected um with people then let's move on to file management and sharing so file management and um, sharing is, uh, oh yeah, Jay just commented, another nice business tool for scheduling purposes is Calendly. Yeah, Calendly is great. Um, let me show you my uh, email here on how I have Calendly set up. Yeah, there it is. Okay. Yeah, I don't need to open my email. I'll show it to you here. So Calendly is great because you can share a booking link with people. So I have a page here that I've set up after I created an account. So if you just type in calendly.com, um, it'll, it'll allow you after you create your account to be able to have a custom URL. So for me, I have just my name and then I only have one option here for a 30 minute meeting. And I set this up where it will allow the uh, them to choose a specific time on my calendar that's free right now. So I have it integrated with my Google Calendar, um, how I have that set up. And um, if you're not using Google Calendar to track your time uh, and <laughs> maintain your time, uh, seeing where it's going, meetings, all that kind of stuff, highly recommend doing that. And then integrating Calendly is really easy. You just click on a button to integrate, connect your Google Calendar to Calendly, and people are able to choose you know, a time that works based on your availability. 
And then after you choose your time, they can put in what I can customize this. So they can put in any kind of, you can put in any fields of information that you want to know from these people. It's really, really good. Um, and then after that, it will send an invite notification to your email saying that someone booked a time. And you can set it up with a Zoom link or a Google Hangout link, however you wanna set it up where, you know, if it's just a phone call, if it's a video call, there's a whole bunch of different ways, you know, that you have available to you to use the Calendly uh, tool. So really nice there. And thank you, Jay, for, um, you know, doing that. I appreciate that. That was one of the things I uh, left out. So um, I have this also the link in my email signature set up. So highly recommend doing that. If you're talking with people, regularly communicating with people back and forth through email uh, and they want to get some time on your calendar, just say, hey, click on the link in my signature. Um, I have it linked book time here and they can click that link, open it up and book some time right away, right through there. So really, really nice to do that. Okay, let's look at Google Drive. So I'm going to move on. Any other questions about um, communication, chat, or video tools? Uh, let me know in the comment section. I'm going to move on to file management and sharing. So uh, Drive is the best file management tool if you're already familiar with G Suite, Google Suite. Really nice. And um, I'll also talk about Dropbox. So Google Drive is terrific. I bought a whole bunch of um, I, I bought a whole bunch of space storage, so I have 130 gigabytes here. Um, and anytime I need to do collaboration on files, so Google Docs for text file, um, Google Sheets for spreadsheets, uh, Google Presentation for doing like PowerPoint presentations. There's a whole bunch of other things. Google Forms. Uh, shout out to Jay. I know he's using Google Forms. I use Google Forms too. It's really, really nice. Um, I mean, I could pro I could do, here's an example of some of the other apps here. So Google Docs, Sheets, Google Slides, that's what it's called, not presentation. Um, so that's your basically the Google version of PowerPoint. Uh, I use a bunch of different uh, add-ons here for different drawings, diagrams that I have. Um, so there's a whole bunch of apps, but Google um, Docs allows you to do so much. Like I have so many different uh, folders in here. Um, I'll open up a Google uh, Doc just so you can see what it looks like. Um, I, I hope some of you are familiar with this because if you're not, this is gonna change your world. Um, I was working with one of the political think tanks that is one of my clients and uh, I opened up a Google Doc for her. We were uh, on the phone and we started um, collaborating with each other in real time. And right here, um, you know, I can have in any kind of text format, uh, text here. Someone else that I share this document with, we can be collaborating and editing the document in real time at the same time. So you'll never lose any kind of edits or revisions because all of it's saved in the cloud. I didn't even need to hit save. It has all changes saved right here. And this is just Google Docs, you know, spreadsheets. I use Google Sheets um, for uh, budgeting, any kind of spreadsheet data, any data analytics that I need to do, I can set up the Google Sheets to pull data from uh, a different source. Um, so <laughs> if you want to know more on how to use um, Google Drive, Google Apps, um, you know, let me know. I'll, I might do another video about that just that topic alone, because it's really, really valuable. There's so much, um, you know, that you can do there uh, with Google Drive, a bunch of tools available. Um, and then Dropbox is another uh, tool that's available for uh, file hosting. So, you know, they'll uh, tell you a little bit more um, information here, file hosting service in San Francisco. Um, but another really amazing, like, cloud storage uh, solution. So Dropbox is great for any kind of file um, sharing, collaboration, all that kind of stuff. So there's an example there. I won't uh, stay on there because there's uh, 
confidential client information. Uh, but Dropbox is great for being able to um, uh, do that file sharing and hosting. So there's a number of different um, sharing plans that are available out there um, that you can use. So Dropbox is great. Uh, any specific questions about file management or sharing? I don't want to go into too much detail there just for the sake of time. But if you're not using Google Drive, Dropbox, highly recommend using it. Um, it's really easy to get set up on there. So let's talk about uh, project management. So Slack, um, you know, I mentioned Slack, but I have it integrated with Asana. So three... Um, if you want to take notes on these three, uh, the best in my recommendation project management tools out there um, are Asana, Trello, and ClickUp. So those three just themselves are uh, terrific because you are able to do so much. Like, like I said, there's automations that you can implement. It's just really, really great. Um, I'm going to share my screen here so that you guys can see. So once Asana opens up, I will show you what that looks like. So I'm going to create a new project here. So it already, Asana itself already gives you some really good templates that you can use. So I'll just choose business plan. So in here, um, it already outlined all of the different sections of what I need to do for creating a business plan. Um, Templana is another really good source for getting just templates that you can integrate into Asana. So they have so many different things available that um, you know, you've got website launch checklist, SEO checklist, a, a weekly um, meeting agenda checklist. So there's so much that you can do here. Uh, Templana, there's a whole bunch of free ones. Um, if you just want to see what's available, they have a, um, some that are paid and free. Um, Kanban, so that's a project management methodology. Uh, Scrum, uh, Agile is another one, but you know they offer bundles too. And all you do is just click on a few buttons, connect your um, Asana uh, profile with it, and it will integrate, add in everything. So here, this is where it's really nice because you know different sections. If I click on like one of the tasks, I can choose you know who who gets assigned to it. I can choose a due date. I can choose um, specific labels and tags. I can make it dependent um, on another task being concluded, uh, you know, approved or concluded. Um, example task here. So I can create subtasks within a main parent task, and then someone can click on, you know, complete the task when it's finished. The um, commenting back and forth. I can tag different people here on, you know, messaging. Hey, I'll tag my wife. Hey, Katie, this task is com done, completed. And hit comment. She's going to get an email in a few minutes letting her know that I commented on that task. And in the inbox, she will also get notified that there's um, something that I tagged her in. And then my tasks, you can view all the different tasks that you have available to you, um, and you can arrange it based on incomplete tasks, completed, all tasks. You can sort it by project, due date, likes. Uh, I don't want to go into too, too much detail again, but there's so much available. I have a whole bunch of different teams set up in here for my personal side businesses, personal businesses, and then I'll also most of the businesses that I work with, clients that I work with, I track the project management through um, Asana. So highly recommend that. And then Trello and ClickUp are really good alternatives to ClickUp is um, a lot more, it looks a lot more designed. Um, it's really nice. A few of the companies I worked at 
uh, prior to who I'm working with right now. Uh, they use ClickUp and it was really good. I, I have nothing really negative to say about them. Basecamp's out there. I personally hate Basecamp. Not very good. Uh, it usually is just a waste of time. Um, let's see. Okay. Um, I'm going to transition into the online learning. So... I typed in, just in Google, uh, some of the best free online education locations. I'll walk through a few of these because I did this earlier and I some of, them, uh, some of them on my list I wanted to talk about too. So um, number one though, before I get into this is Udemy. So Udemy is terrific for just online courses. They have some free uh, courses on here that you can go through. Um, right now, they're actually having a, a really good deal. So, and you can go through, um, search different online courses, online learning opportunities that they have available. Um, the business design, you know, the IT software marketing. There's a whole bunch of different categories um, that they have available. I've gone through a number of different like software boot camps. Um, through Udemy, and it's really, really nice. Highly recommend it. Um, I'm going to share the link to this in the comment section. And then, oh, man. It's not letting me share that link either. Okay. Um, I'll just share this one because Coursera is really good too. So the next one is Coursera. So Coursera is really nice. It has a lot of different universities that they collaborate with in terms of doing classroom learning. So um, one of my connections on LinkedIn actually asked about this. How can universities or like schools do online learning? Well, on Coursera, you can get everything set up, all your curriculum set up, and then you can give access to people. Uh, to the different course learning information that you have. So whether you're doing this as a consumer to consume learning content, or if you're doing this as a content creator, uh, Coursera is really nice to produce like learning uh, content, teaching content, uh, and producing it for different people. Let's see a few other ones. edX. Yeah, Khan Academy. Uh, Khan Academy actually started out on YouTube. I watched these guys um, get their very start. I would watch calculus um, courses, algebra courses, chemistry, biology courses that they have for free. And now he created his enti uh, an entire course platform where he just teaches people. It's really good. I mean, he also does professional content too, which is really, really nice. Um, so yeah, highly recommend it. I mean, YouTube also is another place if you want to just produce free content. Um, that's another way to do it. Um, let me see. I'll go to my channel here. When it opens up. My internet's a little slow right now while I'm streaming. So I'll go to my channel on YouTube. And it's really nice because, you know, I can have my public videos that I do, but I can also have unlisted or private videos as well. So, you know, I produce a lot of content on a regular basis and um, I can even offer this as like, opt-in incentives for email addresses, online courses. Um, so YouTube's just a great video hosting platform. Um, you know, if you want to produce learning content or how-to content, especially now where, you know, you're doing more things at home, this kind of ab ability to do that's really nice. Like, you know, I just did 10 things businesses should be doing to grow through the coronavirus situation. So, you know, that's another uh, video right now. If you're interested, highly recommend checking that out. I give 10 really good ways to, um, 
you know, help businesses grow through this particular situation with what's happening. A lot of companies are being forced to either shut down or, you know, do more remote work. So very important information in there that I tried to compile to deliver as much value as I could. Um, yeah, there's you to me. Code Academy and Stanford Online regularly produce free content. So um, are there any other kind of learning places, platforms that you guys really like? Um, I'll do a shout out to Terry Hirschfeld. Um, I'm going to tag her right now. So they're... Um, while, while kids are at home from school, uh, there's a, a few people who put together some really good uh, virtual tours. Yeah, so this one I think is what it was. So stuck at home, here are 10 ways to explore the world in uh, the age of coronavirus. I'm going to put that here. There we go. So the link to this is in the video description. So it goes through some art collect. So I've got kids at home, art collections. Um, you can visit zoos, national parks. They're still doing tours, which is really cool. Um, there's some live performances happening. Storyline online, storytelling. I love to see this, you know, when people are at home, these places are providing this. So, I mean, that's a good thing, a uh, good point to point out here is if you're a business owner or entrepreneur and, you know, your business is a little bit slower, think about what are some virtual ways or digital ways that you can still deliver value to people through this situation. You know, I've been seeing a lot of people, for me, I, I do digital virtual every day, but for people, you know, who aren't used to this, um, you know, it's a whole new world. And, but there's a lot of people out there who are able to help and equip people with what they need to implement like remote working uh, tools, capabilities, so that people can still get uh, the value that they, they're looking for. But um, you know, things like that, it's, it's been a wake up call for a lot of different businesses. Um, you know, I've been thankful to, uh, go to a lot of different like networking events, but like even now, you know, people who aren't used to doing virtual networking events, they're like, well, I can't, you know, get generate leads because I'm stuck at home. Well, you know, I always recommend maintaining a balance between those two. What are the in-person events that you're doing balanced with the virtual? Because, you know, one one time, one might be on, the only thing that's available to you and another time, um, you know, it won't. So it, it's important to ha maintain that balance between those two. But um, let's see here. Any other, um, I tagged uh, Terry Hirschfeld, so she'll see it later. Have you guys with your family, your kids, uh, found any really cool like online resources for virtual tours or things like that? I'd love to know. Um, if your kids are into gaming, you know, Twitch is always um, a good place. Uh, Twitch.tv just to watch live streamers. So a lot of gamers are on Twitch, but it's not just gamers. I mean, there's people who do art and different things on here um, in different kind of, uh, excuse me, different kind of areas. Yeah, Skillshare, Jay just shared Skillshare. Skillshare is another really good one. Uh, I did not have that on my list, but yeah, highly recommend Skillshare too. So <clears throat> if you see... Um, Twitch here. Yeah, so here's a guy streaming right now. Um, but people doing a lot of gaming, streaming. Um, let's see if they've got the categories up here. Yeah, here we go. So they have it broken down by categories, which is really cool. So a lot of video games, but they also have, like I mentioned, um, different um, other different kind of areas or things too. So, okay. Um, 
I'm going to share, I, I don't think I shared a little bit more, a little bit about who I am. So real quick, I'm going to share who I am. Um, if you have questions, I would love for you to comment them in the comment section below, because uh, I definitely want to um, get to those here so I can answer your question. Make sure that I am, uh, you know, engaging with you guys to deliver um, you know, some solutions to maybe some challenges that you're facing, but real quick, who I am, um, Jason Flagel grew up in Northwest Ohio, um, was accepted into medical school and dental school, but decided not to go that route. I got into political consulting work while I was still in college. Um, and that kind of opened up the whole world to, to me, uh, just working with organizations and doing problem solving. I did a lot of research for them in different social issues, taught myself some computer programming, and um, and then ended up doing a MBA program halfway through. I was like, wow, I you know I want I'm not really learning too much real world information of like starting a company, managing a team, that kind of thing. Nothing against MBA programs. I think that they're very valuable in terms of credibility, but for me, it wasn't a right uh, a good fit for me. I'm definitely an entrepreneur. So I dropped out of the program, worked at digital agencies in pretty much every capacity, um, designer, support engineer, programmer, um, uh, digital marketing, like doing content. Uh, I worked at Abercrombie and Fitch as a home, uh, at their home office as a web developer for a short period of time. Um, and then I became the digital director with Story Builders in Georgia, uh, worked with Kevin Harrington from Shark Tank, the uh, John Maxwell Company, the Ziegler Corporation, and then uh, other authors, um, you know, basically anyone at all kind of levels, but content production, authentic story driven content production was really the sweet spot uh, for us. And then um, about a year and a half through that experience, um, I, I decided to part ways with uh, Bill, the founder. Um, I think we wanted two different things for the company. So ended up working in uh, Columbus, Ohio at uh, Genesis Marketing Group um, as the uh, business growth strategist for them. So I generated a lot of sales opportunities, leads for them, basically helped um, guide their sales department and generate new opportunities of business. So the basement doctor was kind of, this came out of the internal company of the basement doctor, one of the largest basement waterproofing foundation repair companies uh, in the United States. And um, they wanted to have a marketing company because a lot of home contractors needed marketing services. So the problem that Genesis was facing was they didn't have any leads um, outside of their internal kind of network. So I created the Grow Like a Pro show. And that was an entrepreneurial show, um, business owner show, where we interviewed entrepreneurs, business owners from all over the world. Uh, just over the years, I've been able to build up a great network of mentors, people I trust that I was able to learn from, clients. and. You know, I, I just had them, uh, I interviewed them. I used it as a content production house. We ended up getting featured by iHeartMedia as an up and coming uh, podcast. So it was nice because I've supported podcasts behind the scenes, but this was like my first real one where I was the host. Um, and then from that experience, I ended up deciding to look for other opportunities uh, just because it wasn't a right fit for me at the time. You know, my wife and I are having uh, kids. We want to grow the family. So I was ready to move on. Uh, and we also wanted to move to Florida. So we were in Columbus, Ohio, and then decided to make the move after I got another offer from a, another company and then also started getting some more clients of my own. Um, and now, you know, I work with the, one of the best digital agencies based in Silicon Valley. Um, I work with one of the best in the world. I'm the content marketing manager with them. And then I also have a few side businesses. I still do consulting. Uh, I help businesses do problem solving through storytelling and branding. Um, some implementations on improving their tactical work like digital marketing operations. Um, remote work implementation is really big right now. So helping companies, you know, do marketing sales um, in the remote world that we live in right now is, is really big. Um, and then I'm a partner in a few different companies. So, you know, I'll be sharing a little bit more about that. But I do all of this from, you know, my home office, my home studio. 
um, you know, uh, behind me, I've got some of the things on the wall just that I've collected over the years. But, you know, I work uh, digitally. I manage a team digitally. I, I work with all of the other partners that I have digitally through the computer, uh, the phone, my tablet. And, you know, we stay connected pretty much from wherever we're at. So uh, definitely love remote work. I want to see that implemented in more places as we go along. And I think that this opportunity will allow people, you know, opportunity with the coronavirus situation, COVID. Um, I don't want to say it's a crisis because, um, you know, every kind of these, every kind of stressful situation, uh, we have the decision to choose to respond um, or choose to react. And I choose to respond. You know, we can take a step back and really use this um, as an opportunity to better plan um, you know, relax and really focus in on developing ourselves, our relationships that we have with other, uh, other people. But, um, uh, you know, that's one of the biggest things I wanted to share too, and wanted to share a little bit about my story, but, um, any other questions before we go ahead and end the live video? Um, I'm going to create a PDF document that's going to be downloadable with some of the resources that I mentioned here in the uh, the webinar. If you are interested and want it delivered, please go ahead and comment that you're interested in the comment section. I'm going to go ahead and send that to you in a private message. So you'll have direct access to um, that PDF once it's created. But, you know, I really appreciate you guys tuning in here. I hope that this has been valuable. Um, if you think it would be valuable to share with your organization or any other business partners that you're doing business with, go ahead and tag them in the video. I'm going to package this as a podcast episode on my new show, Marketing Masters. Um, I'm going to go ahead and share that um, as well with you guys if you're interested. Any entrepreneurs or business owners, I haven't officially launched this yet, but this is going to be a new podcast where I'm going to be sharing helpful information. Marketing Masters is a show all about helping people think out of the box, ultimately improving yourself, your team, and increasing your revenue. So really appreciate you guys tuning in. Thank you so much for your time. Remember, we're all in this together. My goal is to serve you as much as possible. If you have any que uh, questions but don't feel comfortable commenting, just send me a private message and I will do my best to serve you guys. Remember to keep moving forward and I will catch you guys next time. Bye-bye.